Now, what I want you to recall is we define the absolute value in a variety of different ways. The particular way we were pushing on was this one. The absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to one of two things at different times. Sometimes it's just regular old x minus 3. When is that the case? When, when that thing is positive, right? And alternatively, if that thing is not positive, then you slap a minus sign on it, which means in this case you switch those terms around. It becomes 3 minus x. Okay, now what this gets us into is something you have maybe encountered just in the, like, as a side note before. But what this means is that y equals the absolute value of x minus 3 is what we call a piecemeal function. Piecemeal function? Who's heard of the phrase piecemeal function before? Hands up straight. Hands up. Just a small number of you. Hands down. Okay. Here's the way a piecemeal function works. Don't, don't draw this. Just let me show you what I mean. Usually, we ask you to graph something and we say, okay, uh, graph this, here's the equation, 2x plus 4, x squared minus 1, whatever, and you draw it. But some things in reality, in nature, in artificial systems, they don't just follow one function, not just 2x minus 4, not just x squared minus 1, but sometimes they do this, sometimes they do that. So as an example, I could say uh, y equals two different things. Less x if x is less than or equal to zero, and x squared if x is positive. And what would this look like? Okay, just think about it in pieces. That's why it's called piecemeal, right? Just think about for negative values of x. What does this graph look like? It's just a straight line, isn't it? It's just that guy. Okay. Now, do you see why I've only drawn part of it? I've only drawn one piece of it. I've only drawn the part that satisfies this domain restriction. x is less than or equal to 0. OK, well, what about this? When x is on the right-hand side, when it's positive, you know what a parabola looks like. It looks like that. Now, I know it looks a bit weird. Like, why would something do, do that? And the point is, it doesn't matter. We can define it to be whatever we like. And that's the case here. Okay. So noting that x minus 3 being greater than or equal to 0 is the same as x being greater than or equal to 3. And noting that this is the same as x is less than 3. You can see, x equals 3, kind of an important point, right? Just like here, x equals 0 is the junction between two different functions. x equals 3 is the junction over here. So let's just mark in x equals 3. Okay. Now if you go ahead and think about it again in pieces, let's do the going down, x minus 3 is going to look like this. That's what x minus 3 looks like. If I drew the whole thing, it would continue, of course, and it would hit the y-axis. Where would it hit the y-axis? It would hit it down at negative 3, wouldn't it? But I'm not interested in that part. This part is not part of the domain, so I'm going to get rid of it. Okay. Now for the rest of the domain, when x is less than 3, I don't draw that graph, I draw this one, what's that look like? How would you describe it? Hmm. <coughs> yeah, I can see some hands going on. Okay, do you want to give me some words? Uh, it, uh, can anyone give me some words? Because words are harder than you think. Uh, We're used to... Michael, what do you reckon? It's a negative three. Okay, it's going to be sloping down, isn't it? It happens to be sloping down exactly opposite to how this is sloping up. Did you notice that? Uh, and one more piece of information. It's got an, a y-intercept of 3. Do you notice that? So if I draw it like so, there it is. Which is why many people, when they first meet absolute value and start graphing them, we start to think of absolute value graphs as bouncy graphs, right? It's like it's sort of coming down as a bit of boing. It just sort of rebounds off the x-axis, okay? It kind of does look like that, but really what's going on is there are actually two different things here. This is a very Jekyll and Hyde function. Sometimes it's this, other times it's that. Just to finish this off, okay? I have now two well-defined branches of my absolute value function. And later on you'll see, sometimes you can have two or three or four or any number you want, okay? It's
it's going to be very helpful if you carefully label which one is which. So this one is x minus 3. This one is 3 minus x. Now, before we leave off this lovely little graph, I'm going to use it to solve a secondary question. Do you remember yesterday I gave you those review questions? There were four of them, and they came in pairs. Do you remember that? I asked you to graph and then solve an inequality. Graph and then solve an inequality. So we're going to do the same thing here. What if, on the basis of this graph, I asked you this question? Solve. Is that going to stay for The absolute value of x minus 3 is, let's do this. Hmm. Now, do you remember, when we were looking at solving equations like this, you could deal with it by cases. You can deal with it by cases, that's fine. Okay? But if you've got a picture already, you might as well use the picture. So I'm trying to train you when you read this to see this. If you have another color there, it'll be handy. Because what I can do is, I've already graphed y equals that. Now, on the same set of axes, I'm going to graph this. Okay? And it's just a horizontal line. Looks like it's going to go through somewhere like here. Okay. So, are you starting to get the vibe here? What is this asking in visual terms? What does it mean? Yeah, sure. What is x minus 3 with the absolute values less than or equal to? Yeah, so in, in visual terms, less than or equal to means below, right? It's below because these are y values that we're comparing, okay? So you can kind of see it on the picture, right? Uh, this part down here, the v part, this valley, okay? It's all underneath. It's all underneath, okay? So, so long as you're between here and here, you're good, okay? Uh, well, let's work out where here and here is. Uh, on the graph, you can actually draw down, okay? Because this is a very simple graph and hopefully you've got good enough sort of construction on there, you can actually just read that off. What number is that? That should be negative one, right? Like it's all gradient one. It's a messy negative sign. It's all gradient one, so it's easy to read off. Gradient negative one. What about this one over here? What's that going to come down to? Seven. Okay, now I think I see it's seven because think, right? If you want to start from here, you've got to go three, just go up from zero up to four. Well, it takes you four units to get there, doesn't it? Because your gradient is just one. So therefore, that's seven. Just for bonus points, if you like, you can also add on, you can shade the region on the number line that's relevant. I want the one that's between there and there. So that means it's inclusive, which means I've got this nice solid bubble. And then you join the dots, and you're done. Okay. So between negative 1 and 7, for those values, this inequality is true. And of course, you can go ahead and you can put some numbers in. Put in x equals 0. Will that be true of this? It will, right? Because uh, the absolute value of 0 minus 3, the absolute value of 0 minus 3, of course, is 3. And that, sure enough, is less than or equal to 4. It checks out. And you can check any value in there, and it will be fine. 